They didn't recognize him, verse 28. They didn't find a proper ground for the death sentence, but they had him executed. When they had carried out all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And for many days he was seen by those who traveled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. These are now his witnesses to our people. My friends, God was raised from the dead. Jesus is alive today. And if your name is written in the book of life, the moment is coming when you are going to get to see him in his power and glory and see the scars that he earned on that day. Man, you got to get excited about that. What is it that drives us? What is it that gets us to the place where we want to... Man, Saturday's coming, preacher, and you want us to get here at 9 o'clock in the morning and stay till 7 o'clock at night? Have you lost your mind? Why would we do it? Because we believe that Jesus gave his life for us. And if we can't give a day to tell the world uh, his story, you got to look inside and go, maybe there's a problem. He endured the cross and shed his blood for you and me. I like when you two guys are sitting next to each other. You keep it up. <laughs> I like them am ameners. Death could not hold him. Paul finishes up. His fifth point, of course, is going to lead us right to the communion table. Let's see what he continues to write about this story. Verse 34, the fact that God raised him from the dead never to decay is, is contained in these words. I give you the holy and such blessings promised to David. Then went down to verse 38. Therefore, my brothers, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is justified from everything. You could not be justified by the law of Moses. Justification, forgiveness of sins, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. What a sermon. Talk about in one short, power-packed moment, he gives the whole story. Remember who God is? Here's all of his power. Here's all the things he's done. You need to repent and turn to him. It's possible to miss him, but please don't because he possesses power. Jesus was raised from the dead, and forgiveness of sins is still available. Wow. You couldn't, you couldn't package it any better. That's less than a 45-minute sermon. One last verse. Let's close up with Psalm 32 and verse 1, and it'll lead us right to the communion table. So Paul makes it clear that forgiveness of sins is possible. This idea has been contained throughout the Scripture. And in Psalm 32 and verse 1 is this same idea. This idea that it's possible to have our sins forgiven. In Psalm 32, and in verse 1, David writes about this, and he says, Blessed, blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and in his spirit is no deceit. Anybody want to thank God for that? Your sins are not held against you. They're erased as far as the east is from the west. There is no way you can't approach the communion table and not have a smile on your face. Consider it a celebration because this represents the fact that Jesus Christ gave his life on a cross and shed his blood. And if you receive that, man, your sins are forgiven. Blessed is he whose sins are forgiven. Wow. The story that Paul taught all these thousands of years ago is still a story that we need today. Nothing's changed. We package it a little bit differently. Paul didn't have the advantage of television screens to nail it home. But the story doesn't change. Jesus Christ came, he died, and in him is forgiveness of sins.